Welcome to Rewiring Health. This podcast is for those of you who have an eating disorder, chronic pain, or both. In this channel, we'll dive deep into inspirational stories of those who have healed from both and also get into the mind-body connection and how we can heal the mind through the body and also heal the body through the mind. Come and join me on this journey. Are you stuck in a pattern of setting lofty goals, starting out strong, relying on willpower, and then gradually falling off and giving up? Change is hard, but it's even harder when you do it in a way that your brain naturally resists. In this episode, I give you three simple steps to help you stick with your intentions and begin to trust yourself to follow through. Welcome to another episode of Rewiring Health. I am your host, Kelly Kessler, and today I'm going to talk to you about why it is so important to keep your word, not break promises, and live with integrity with yourself and others. And I'm going to give you three steps you can do that so that you can maintain the goals that you have in life and move yourself in a direction that you desire. So first, I just want to share a story of how this has impacted me. And there was a time back in college, uh, one of my classmates, we're friends, and we had been working really hard and we had scheduled this time to like, let's go out and enjoy yourselves. And there was a mall nearby and in the mall, they had go-karts and a comedy club and like restaurants. So we're like, let's go hang out in the mall and just get a night out. And, um, and so we scheduled that. And so the night came when we were supposed to meet up at the mall and I got ready, you know, I'd set that time aside, got ready, got down to my car, just about to start my car. And I get a text message saying, sorry, I can't make it tonight. And that was it. There wasn't, you know, she hadn't explained that, you know, there was emergency or anything like that. Just said, sorry, can't go. And uh, this was not the first time she had kind of canceled on me before. And so I just remember sitting there feeling frustrated and feeling disappointed and also feeling like, you know, I don't really want to schedule anything with her anymore because I'm kind of sick of her doing this to me. And so got out of my car, went back into my apartment and just went about my nightly routine. And so if you've ever had this happen in life to you before, or maybe you've done it to somebody, if you're on the receiving end of it, it can really leave you feeling just like utterly disappointed and feeling like you were let down significantly and, and also feeling like you can't necessarily trust that person's word. And So it's really important when we make promises and we say something that we follow through with it for several reasons. First, we don't want to make somebody feel like that. And secondly, it also keeps our integrity. So if we make promises to others and we hold true with that and we follow through, we now are viewed to have more integrity with that decision. And this is important in interpersonal relationships, but it's even more important with ourselves. When we say we're going to do something and we follow through with it for ourselves, our brain loves that. It says, yes, like I can do this and empowers our brain to realize that we can accomplish anything that we say we're going to. But on the flip side, if we're someone who makes these lofty goals and we're going headstrong for a few months and then we kind of fall off and don't really return to it. Our brain says, "Mm, you did it again. I wasn't sure if you were going to do that. I'm not really trusting that. And there becomes this big incongruence between what we're saying and what we're doing. And then we lose confidence in our ability to actually ever accomplish anything that we say we're going to do. And so there are three things we can do so that we don't get into this habit because many people experience this, especially around New Year's when we are excited and hopeful for this big change that this year is going to be the year that my life improves, whether it's your health, your finances, relationships, whatever it might be. We're very hopeful typically in the beginning of the year because it's like fresh start. We feel like we can really do it this year. We go full force into it. We have great strength in our willpower. And then eventually it kind of dies down and we're finding ourselves feeling disappointed on ourselves that we didn't continue with that. And that then sends the signal again to our brain that do you, can you really do what you say you're going to do? 
And a lot of times the problem is that with that is that because our goals are so lofty that we often feel either overwhelmed or it's not realistic to actually do it in the time frame that we make up in our minds to accomplish it in. So to break that pattern of setting these goals and not following through with it and then creating a big incongruence between your words and what you actually do that perpetuates the cycle of feeling like we can't necessarily accomplish what we say we're going to do and feeling like we're stuck and we're in a rut all the time. Here are three steps you can take to set yourself up better and actually live a life of accomplishing what you're say what you say you're going to do and have that inner integrity and that inner voice that tells you that you've done this before you can do it again. So the first thing to do that is to start small. So start small so small that it would be silly for you not to accomplish that. So for example, if your goal is to start uh, journaling, so you want to journal, a small, small goal would be, let me set a one minute timer every night. And when that goes off, that's it. Like all I have to do is just one minute of journaling. And so it becomes much easier when you have these very, very small goals to start. And then once you start doing that, your brain says, oh, you said you're going to do it. You did it. You said you're going to do it. You did it. And that compounds. And now your brain starts trusting what you're going to do and what you said you're going to do. So start so small that it seems so silly for you not to do it because that's going to decrease the resistance your brain has in, in implementing that. Because at the end of the day, the last thing we want and our brains want is another job, another thing that we have to add in that takes more time out of our lives. So that's why it is so important to start absolutely as small as you need to. The second step is to write down what you intend to do so that is clear. So when it's on paper and it's written down and it's black and white, that is now what you intend to do. And it's out of your brain and onto the paper. So it's very clear for you to see like, this was my goal and this is what I need to hold myself to. When it's stuck in our heads and it's not out onto paper, we can often kind of manipulate that sometimes. Like, well, I said I was going to do five minutes of, of journaling or whatever it is, but you know what? Maybe tonight's okay. I'll just skip it. And then you do it the next night. Eh, I'll just skip it tonight. Yeah. You know what? Maybe that wasn't such a good goal. Maybe I should do something else. And it then becomes kind of, again, that cycle of like allowing ourselves to fall back into those patterns of what's comfortable. And now we don't make any efforts to change or move forward. So writing it down gives your brain a clear picture of like, this is what I intended to do. This is what I'm going to stick to. And then on top of that, we can't just arbitrarily make changes in our life without knowing why we are doing it. So for any life change that you intend to do, we have to have a strong why. Why is it so important that you start to implement these little things in your life and start changing? What is the driving force? So if it is writing in a journal and being uh, showing gratitude every night, maybe your why is that you tend to think very negatively. You're in your head all the time. You feel frustrated, overwhelmed, and and you wanted to try to change that. And this is one thing you wanted to start implementing. So that's a strong why, because if you truly don't want to live with feeling the negativity day in and day out, that can be a great driving force for you to actually make these changes. But if you don't know why you're doing it and it's not important enough for you to do it, your brain's going to say, you know what? We only have so much energy. It's not really worth diverting it into that direction. Let's just continue to do what we do. Self-preserve, continue to feel like we're in survival because it's not worth these changes because I'm not very efficient at it at this point. So again, our why has to be so strong that we our brain wants to make these changes and go outside the efficiency box of what it's used to, to actually implement that. So if you're listening to this and you feel like, you know what, I have done many things and stopped, started and stopped many things in my life. I always start out strong and I feel like I never really finished strong or 
I'm so sick of this like cycle that I'm putting myself in where like I try to make all these life changes and then it just never really pans out and my life is the same as it was five years ago, then doing these three steps will really be a game changer for you to start holding your word, maintain your own integrity with yourself, start trusting what you say you're going to do. And now it changes the whole script of what you tell yourself. So if you are someone who has not follow through with your word in the past, a lot of that inner dialogue may be like, well, I've done this before. It's just the same old cycle I always do. I'm frustrated myself. I want better for myself, but I don't know why I can't stick to anything. Now that dialogue starts changes, changing to, you know what? I made the goal of writing in a journal for one minute every day. And now that I'm looking at it, I've been doing this for two weeks. I guess I, I can do this. And now the dialogue starts changing your brain. Like I do hold my word. I can do that. What else can I do? And it opens up our brains for more possibility rather than being in the rut of feeling like we always fail ourselves or we can't follow through or why do I always do this to myself? And, and then now again, it perpetuates that negativity cycle when we constantly have that inner dialogue as opposed to making these very small changes in our life. And now momentum starts following that and we can move in that direction instead of being stuck. So I hope that serves you well. Try implementing these into your daily routine. And I guarantee you will see a change in your own integrity and starting to trust your word and what you are capable of. And that is the, the most empowering thing you can do for yourself. If you set an intention and you follow through with it, that is straight evidence to your brain that you are capable of doing it and you are capable of doing more. So I hope this serves you. If you found value in this, share it with a friend who would also benefit. And thank you again for spending your precious time with me today and take care and enjoy your day. Thank you for spending your precious time to listen to this episode of Rewiring Health. My mission is to inspire hope and healing through science-backed practices. If you found value in this, please share with three people and leave a review. By doing so, this message can be spread to those who need to hear it most. Also, to get updates on the most recent episodes, please subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for being part of this community, and I am forever grateful for you.